Okay, so just recapping again. We have our namespace, that's the overall project. This is the area of the project, controllers. In there we have a class called home controller that inherits from controller. And then we have a couple of different actions in this method. The first one is called index. The second one is called fan mail. And we're gonna decide what happens when the user accesses the fan mail site. We're gonna go write our code here to determine what we're going to do when the user calls that action. Where do we want to send them? What do we want to do? What data do we want to load up? And then once we have all that information, then we can return the view. I could make when they type in index, I could return the view fan mail if I want to. That'd be confusing, but I could do it or vice versa. And so, um, the, you're, you're starting to get just a taste, a feel for this idea of coding by convention that happens in .NET to make your life easy. They don't want to have to type in fan mail every time. So just, we'll assume that, if you don't return anything, we'll just assume that there's a view with the same action in that same folder that matches this name. All right, I don't want to belabor that too much, but, but you know that was something that was confusing to me in the beginning, and I hope is a little bit clearer to you than it was for me as I started out in working in this. Now, one thing you may have noticed is I copied out fan mail and I just grabbed the, the code for the form without grabbing any of the outer HTML or body or anything like that. And it still worked. And this is absolutely true that it will try to help you and make up for errors that you might make and still display the page as best it can. But the truth is when I run this site, I've got this little thing and maybe I ought to make it a little bit prettier, but there's this, there's this thing about Professor Anderson fan club, the one, the only Mr. Greg Anderson. And maybe when I go to the uh, home slash fan mail page, I want that same, maybe I want the same picture, maybe I want the same stuff on that page too. And so obviously I can just copy and paste the whole thing. But if I have a, kind of a, a template or a layout that I want to be across all my pages, which is very normal in the world of, of web development, then .NET gives us a good uh, tool to be able to do that. And so within the views folder, I can say, right click on here and say, I wanna add another folder. And this one is going to be my shared views. So this is ones that are shared across all forms. And then within that shared view, I can create a file. Uh, so I'm going to go create a view, add, and then you'll see that there's actually a default for this. So there's a razor layout. So if I click on this, it'll create a, f a, f a file called underscore layout.cshtml. And if I click on that, it's going to add in a file that, that contains the layout. And as a default for that, so in the shared layout view, it has actually built for me all the stuff I would typically have in a HTML file, HTML tag and head tag. Um, we'll talk more about this in a minute. Um, well, it's got this that, that uh, squeezes, shrinks the website based on how big, if you're on a mobile device, how it's going to look. And then, um, it's got a body tag here, uh, opening and closing with a div in it called render body. And so this is a, a default layout that's, that can be applied to all pages. And so if I go steal some stuff from my index.cshtml, so I'm gonna go grab the stuff that's inside my head tag, and I'm gonna copy that and I'm going to go back into, I'm going to close some of these files. I'm going to go back into my underscore layout, my shared layout file. And I'm going to say inside that head tag, I'm going to leave the, I think this is good to have in actually, to have the change for the device you're on. But I'm going to drop in here the rest of my stuff that was in my default website. And then I'm going to go grab the stuff like the scripts, bootstrap, the site JS, jQuery that I might want on all pages. And I'm gonna copy that out. And I'm gonna drop that 
in the bottom of my body here. Okay. We feeling good about that? And then uh, I, I said I probably want to have, we'll get rid of this worked. But this Professor Anderson uh, Ganderson fan club and that the tag saying the one, the only Mr. Greg Anderson and the image, maybe I want that on every page. And so I'm going to take that and copy it out and move it into my shared layout. And what that means for my index page is I no longer need any of this, any of this stuff because it's going to come from the shared layout. I no longer need any of this stuff because it's going to come from the shared layout and I can just focus on writing the HTML for that specific view. And same thing with fan mail. Um, I can get rid of the razor code for now. I can just have the stuff pertaining to that particular view. So I save this and I've got this shared layout file. Both of these files are accessing that file. And then you'll notice inside this shared layout file, there's a render body. And the render body is where it will drop the files that are attached to this. So the index stuff, it'll take this code and drop it where it says render body. This is razor code. So this is C sharp. The at sign says we're going to do some C sharp here. And the method name is render body. And it's going to go grab whatever page we're accessing uh, per our controller. It's going to go grab all this information first and then render the body inside that. And same thing here. Uh, it'll go grab this fan mail stuff and drop it right where it says render body. And this layout now will be applied. So you go, you picture websites that have the same look and feel across the entire site. You just do this part once, and then you write the individual code for each page uh, on their specific view. All right, let's see if it works. It's not going to, spoiler alert. Well, yeah, it, that'll work. Let's go to the the home fan mail and it's not showing up there's one other thing we have to do and so there's a file called view start that tells uh, the views what to do when they start up and so I'm going to right click on the views folder I'm going to add a new item and this one is called razor view start and you'll see the name of it is underscore view start dot CSHTML. I add that and it by default, again, it's trying to save you all this work and time. It by default has a little C sharp code in there that says go set the layout equal to whatever's an underscore layout file. And again, it's not putting underscore layout dot CSHTML. It's just putting underscore layout because it knows it's a CSHTML file. Why the heck is it going to make you go type that extra code when you can just type in the name and it'll, it'll translate that for you? And so it's saying make the default layout on all sites be whatever's in the underscore layout file that we just created. And when we do that, we run this. Did I forget to delete it out of the first one? No, I did delete it, didn't I? Yeah, I did. What's it doing? Did I put, did I didn't put it in there twice, did I? Let's look and see. Nope, the image is just in there one time. Do I need to clear my cache again? So when you're running this, by the way, if you hold down on the refresh button, I think, you know, right click. There's a way to do a hard refresh control. I think it is doing a refresh though. Okay. Well, we'll figure out what's going on in the next video. Spencer out.